You're welcome to Congo with PSC on North Plus TV. My name is Tahidu Abdul Jalil, but you can call me Prank Sparkles Africa. So straight away, let's go say hello to our guest on our show today. He is a TV personality. He's been on our screens for almost years today and counting. And uh, by God's grace, he's become a household name. We saw the need profiling him, letting you know who he is, where he started from, and all that you need to know about him. Perhaps this will go a long way to motivate some of you out there that are looking up to him and would want to one day be like him. Hello, Abdul uh, Jalil Nabili. You're welcome to our studios. Thank you so much. Let's say Corona greetings small. <laughs> we are in, uh, not in normal times, like people you. would say. It's been Once again, you're welcome Thank to you so Convo with Thank PSA. You. Thank you, bro. I hope you're doing great. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very, very well. Thank Tell you. us about the uh, Northern, Northern Achiever on uh, on TV. How is it faring? Well, my Northern Achiever is doing extremely well. Mm. Um, beginnings are always very hard, difficult. It's been more than a year today. Um, I think we started in 2018. Mm. Yeah, or no, 2019. I think it was on January 11, 2019 that we started. Mm. And since from there up to now, we've been growing our fan base and people have been getting aware of the program. And so we are, we are grateful to God that he has brought us this far. And I do believe that we are changing a lot of lives through the program and motivating a lot of the youth around uh, the North Ghana and the world at large. So, Alhamdulillah, we are grateful for what we have achieved so far. All right. Yeah. I, I must admit that you are an icon. You've become somebody most of the youth in Ghana look up to and even beyond. I didn't know uh, about that. Anyways. Sure, I'm telling you for today. <laughs> so, uh, we just decided to profile you, okay. at least, uh, like I said mm. early on, people mm. that, that, that look up to you. You have become a prayer target for most of the youth out there. Mm. The, 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 who is Abdul Jalil Nabili before Northern Activa? Let's begin with uh, perhaps uh, who you are, basically the house you're coming from, wow. family and uh, that much. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because I, I usually normally mm. would be asking somebody this question and for the first time in my life on TV, someone is asking me the same question. Mm. And so I can imagine how it felt, it always feels when I ask these people these questions. But mm. I am just uh, one normal human being, mm. young man, who grew up in a very poor background. Wow. Growing up, uh, my father was quite wealthy, okay. very wealthy in Yendi, and he was one of the, the, the most wealthy people in Yendi. But up to some point, like, I didn't actually enjoy his wealth. Right. You know, it was my senior brothers who enjoyed him more, because by the time I got to about six, seven years, he had, you know, the wealth has dwindled and he had almost become a poor man right. and so that's how I grew up I grew up in a polygamous family right. and I usually often say that I grew up in two environments from my mother's side and from my father's side so I have two temperaments right. my father was the hot type who would not leave anybody you know who would take no nonsense so to speak and so I grew up with him I had been in my father's house with the whole of the family he had about Growing up, and he had about four wives and so many children. I had senior brothers, junior brothers, and we were in the same house, eating together, doing everything practically together. We would go to the farm together, come back, and we'd still be going to school and go to Makaranta as well. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was about 13 years, and that was the time I went into junior high school, I moved to my uncle's house, uh, Aladji Kums. Okay. That's my maternal uncle. Okay. And he is the cool type. He's such a personality who you can slap with on one cheek and you give the other cheek to slap okay. and so i picked some part of him and i picked some part of my father so usually i am the cool type but when i am pushed to the wall and i become angry it is usually very difficult for you to you know the other side would have shown yes yes <laughs> and so for education i started mm. with nurawar islamic primary okay uh, from 1993 to 99 Okay. Where I went to see the junior high school at Islamic Number no. Two JSS, also in Yendi, okay. and uh, from 2000 to 2002. Mm. After that, I went to Ghana School, Ghana Senior High School in Tamale, Great. from 2002 November to 2005. I remember my last paper I wrote on 2nd July. Okay, that was course accounting, All 2005. Right. Okay, and after that, I came home and I wanted to go to Polytechnic. Somehow, I don't know, something told me I need to go to a Polytechnic, and. My parents, my uncle and my brothers mm. said, no, I won't go to a polytechnic. I have a potential to go to the university. But I had that perception that going to a polytechnic would get me a job faster. 
okay. after school. Okay. But they said, no, if I want to go to a polytechnic, then I would have to sponsor myself. I thought it was a joke. Okay. Even though I did not fail, but it took me, I sat in the house for three good years. Okay. Because of the confusion between my people and myself. As to which way to go. As to where to go. Mm. Now, I got alarmed in 2008 and I said, no, I have to go to school. Wow. And so I applied for UD. I bought the UDS forms, applied, and I was given admission to go read uh, Integrated Development Studies uh, at UDS, and that is the World Campus. Okay. And fortunately for us, in our uh, during our time or at, in our batch, at about level 300, we were given the opportunity to, spe uh, to have specific courses that we would want to okay. do. And so I chose to do development communication. All right. And uh, I graduated in 2012. And I've seen been into several other things, you know. Before. Several other things. Yes, yes. That we shall we will come to talk about. Uh, well, uh, you heard it all from Abdul mm -hmm. Jalil Nabili. He's actually telling us where he started from and uh, how he was raised. Uh, I've actually heard stuff about he being the son of the MC for EMD, which he clarified. That, that should be your uncle, right? Yeah, yeah. He's okay. My uh, but I, I, usually, I usually call him a father because he played a father role okay. in my life. Okay. And so sometimes you give credit where it is due mm. and so for me he is more than an uncle okay for me he is a father okay. because he's called me a, a part of me tells me that he is just my father all right but sometimes you cannot swap your biological father mm. for an uncle all right but he is you a definitely yes. even even yes. islam says mm. you should mm. just give due prudence where yeah. Uh, yeah. perhaps yeah. Uh, that is it all right so abdul jelly if you don't mind let me take you a bit back to ghana school you okay. mentioned ghana school mm -hmm. and uh that simply poked me that means we are oga right? yes we are our guests that spirit <laughs> always will never die yeah 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 um, that's good in the north so your, your 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 year batch your group mm -hmm. uh, which is that house uh, master school that you can still remember um yes you know i i was the quiet type outside mm. but in my class and my dormitory i was the most i was the loudest okay because i would always make noise mm. but if you see me outside you would swear that i cannot talk okay and so in my class for instance i was the ec chairman <laughs> what it meant was that whenever I am not satisfied with any class prefect, hmm. I will come out and say that, look, class, our class prefect is not living up to expectations. So okay. we are changing him. Wow. Then I will stand, then they will choose people, then we will vote. I would supervise over I that. See. Now, my badge, for instance, I was the I was a very close friend to Ramsey Dynasty. Okay. We had a Choman, okay. he was the Choman of our badge. All right. And today he's a, I think he's a fire, one of the fire chiefs in one of the districts. All right. Yes, we met again at UDS and uh, then I, there was this guy, Awol. Okay. Awol was the 2IC of the Cadet Corps okay. in, in our badge, during our badge. And a couple of other uh, humble guys and people that we I was always associating myself with. Uh, to was there a senior as well by name S.Y. Bukari at all time? S.Y. was one excellent. The I'm sure he's Yes, I'm now. told he's late. Mm -hmm. He was in perfect. Amen, use. amen. The Bokuberian <laughs> who <laughs> what, Charlie, you have, remind, you have reminded me of somebody. This man was as dark as this table, and he always tell us that. And in his hometown, yes, he is the Jatu of their hometown. <laughs> Jatu, I remember that story. I remember that story. You know, <laughs> and you know, students are very mischievous. Mm. You know, he had a big belly, mm. a, a pot belly. Sure, sure, sure. And we used to say that when he's coming out, he would raise his stomach like <laughs> this, and the wife would. Uh, uh, would, would uh, fasten his belt and then he would put the stomach <laughs> on the belt because of the way he would always take it. And so, you know, they were mm. interested. Sure, there sure. was this man to the late Cogside. Cogside. Did he Cogside. I remember Cogside. Yes. The, the two of them. Tall man. Yes, he was a, the headmaster of academy uh, okay. during our time. All right. And he was also a disciplinarian. He would sure, always sure. be moving around class to class, tr making sure that every student is in class mm. and making sure that teachers are there to teach you. And though these things they did, in fact, actually helped a lot to, okay. you know, shaping us, uh, to making us who we are today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we, for, right away from Ghana School, let's go talk about uh, work experience. Mm. And, uh, mm. but I would want to go straight into this work you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I know you are a teacher and mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. into media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are two different professions. Yeah. I know teaching probably once you go through school, you are supposed to be here and there by okay. the sets you obtain from school. Mm -hmm. But media, how come? Somebody asked me that question some time ago. <laughs> Prince, we thought you were quite cool. You wouldn't go <laughs> talking. But let me also ask you that question today. Yeah, yeah you see, media is something that has always been in me 
growing up, I remember my uncle, my father, mm. Elijah Combs, would always give us work to do. And it was just to test us and to see where you can fit in more. Okay. And so usually he would give us an essay to write. And when we write, or at the those days when we wrote those you know, essays, he would always be impressed with the way I put things. Mm -hmm. And so he always often believed that I am someone who should even read us. Okay. But ironically, I read business at Ganasco. Right. I read business, and it's also good because it, 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 it has opened my mind mm -hmm. to be that entrepreneur kind of a person who wants to achieve certain things in life. Mm -hmm. Now, when I went to school at UDS, I opted for uh, development communication because I felt there was the need for me to either be into acting okay. or in the media. Okay. And so that is what set the tone for what I am today okay. or what I do in the media today. Not many people know about what development communication is about. Development communication is just more like journalism okay. because there you do mass media studies, mm -hmm. uh, ethics of media, and so many other things that are related to journalism. Okay. It's just that it is not the full journalism course, course that you may sure. think of. Yes, but that is what it is. So I am more like a partially trained journalist. Okay. And so for me, it is my field already. And maybe teaching is just another thing okay. that I am doing okay. apart from, you know, being Still two different professions. How do you cope with teaching and same time being as creators always? It's difficult, but whenever there is perseverance, there is nothing that is impossible. Mm -hmm. And so usually what happens is that I have a team and to be frank with you, it is the team that is driving me. They drive me a lot and I can just call my team tonight and say tomorrow morning by 4 a.m. we need to get into our car and move okay. and they'll be ready. Okay. And so sometimes you need to get the right people involved. And when you have them, nothing is impossible for you to do. And one thing I would also like to say here is that sometimes in the North, we usually want to do things all alone. People want to always be seen. It is me, it is me, it is me. And when you do that, it, you, you, you put a whole lot of workload on yourself mm -hmm. and then you, are, you limit your, 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 your achievements. Mm -hmm. And so if you are able to delegate so many other things to other people in a group, you know, this person is doing this, this person is doing that, you give yourself a free mind to be able to do other things. Mm -hmm. And my media work does not make me a bad teacher. Okay. I am always in school. I try to always be in class to ensure and to make sure that my students are taught because I am paid for it. Mm -hmm. I need to always ensure that I deliver so that I don't I don't get paid for nothing. Okay. Yes. Certainly a very interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. Convo with PSA. You are live on North Plus TV. We'll go for a bit of a break. We'll be back. Every week, my team and I work tirelessly to bring to you prominent Nordness, one at a time. They tell us their stories of how they grew up, the struggles they have been through, and how they attained greater heights in life. I used also to paint Angora. What do you guys say? I saw so many things. Further, they give pieces of advice to the youth and parents alike that if adhered to, will change society positively. I don't know. This is only a problem. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. You made another appearance. You check out the gender. Now, you must trust in yourself. Believe in yourself. Have confidence in yourself. You must always pray for people to succeed in their various fields. Then Allah will give you what he thinks is best for you. Wherever we find ourselves, let's see how do we support each other. Young people might learn to spend it in their life. And to go, always think before you spend. Tell the boy, buy present to me. Present to me. Me to spend to me. Who let go back to me and get rid of the money? Now I'm going to get rid of the money. But I'm going to tell you. So, why not join me at the Jalil Nabeli, a son of Musa Kumo, with your family and friends? Every Friday at 8.30 p.m. on your favorite TV station, Sagani TV on My Northern Achiever, as my guests and I throw you to life-changing stories. Follow me on social media at Jalil Nabjali. Like our Facebook page, 
and subscribe to our YouTube page both at My Northern Achiever for present and past videos as well as more info. My Northern Achiever, time. Welcome back from the commercial break. We still have in, uh, on the show with us Abdul Jalil Nabiali. And uh, we continue the combo with him as the name says, combo with PSA. Uh, Nabiali, a very interesting conversation. Mm. You've made some uh, revelations about yourself. People definitely would have had this. This is first hand information mm. you're giving out on our show. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. But uh, I want us to talk about your program on TV mm. that has become your household name, My Northern Achiever. Okay. How how did that come about? Well, did you just wake up one morning and you were like, I'm going on TV and I'm uh, coming with Northern Achiever? How did you come with the concept? You know, I I don't know how to start, but so many things are in my head right now. But the thing is that we 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 had a, we we did a program that we dubbed uh, Miss Damba mm -hmm. in 2017, and one day I was, I went to a cafe, my laptop had a problem mm -hmm. to print certain documents and, you know, for the program. I came into this cafe and I saw little children of about 10, between mm -hmm. 10 and 12 years, there were about mm -hmm. four or five of them. Mm -hmm. And another young man who was about in his mid twenties and they were doing cyber fraud mm -hmm. in broad daylight at about 10 a.m. It was a Friday and it was this middle, mid-twenties guy who was teaching them what to do, how to converse with the whites on, on the net. And I got alarmed because for me, I believe that we have had a very good upbringing thanks to my uncles and my, my fathers. I may not ever want to go into cyber fraud or any other social vice, but very soon we are going to have to bring, begin giving birth to children. And these our children are going to be unleashed into this kind of environment. That was actually then. Now there's a child in your life. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> in fact, a year down the line, there's a child in. So I was thinking about, mm. if I now have Anika, she's going to go out there and mingle with these kind of people. You know, you train your child in your house, the child goes out and mingle with friends. Mm. And so they are most likely going to pick up these behaviors from them and bring it back home. And you cannot be able, you may not be able to, you know, put them in line. But I asked myself several questions. Why are these kids at this age in a cafe doing cyber fraud? It is most likely because they are looking up to somebody that they want to be like. Mm. And they thought the person just got up one day and became rich. Mm. And so I felt that there's a need for us to begin bringing people who have tried to make it in life mm. to tell their stories. Let them listen to them and know that they didn't just go to a cafe and did cyber fraud and made their money. Mm. They didn't get to where they are because they were dubious. Mm. They got to where they are because they struggled, they suffered, they worked hard to get to where they are. Right. So that at least these people who are in it may change their minds. Mm. And those who are yet to join may also say that, no, instead of joining it, let's also wait, work hard and make it the hard way. Mm. That way you benefit a lot more from your sweat than just going through the shortcut way right. in life. Yeah. And you came up with so that, that is how I came up with my Northern Achiever. Right. I called my team and everybody was okay with it. Okay. They were interested. And then we came up with a proposal for, to Sagani TV. Sagani TV was also okay with it. And they, even though it was a back and forth, it was difficult convincing them to bring the program. But today I'm sure they are happy they did because at least uh, we, it, it is one program that is giving them a lot of viewers and it is, you know, lifting the name of Sagani TV right. higher than before. All right. Yeah. Some have come with the concerns that uh, a very well-branded show of that nature mm -hmm. should have been aired in the Bani yeah. at our mother tongue, yeah. you and I, yeah. so that yeah. the old lady in the house, mm -hmm. People, the women in the house would mm -hmm. get to understand the mm -hmm. messages that are being channeled out mm -hmm. every, perhaps every Friday on Sagani TV. Yeah. Why did you choose to go English instead of the Bani? Wow. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the, the, the tablet the tablet gare so come. Mm -hmm. You see, my not achieve the Beshama the I will program touch Konko. My northern achiever, the to do one sana, bang 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 do sa, cut his arm the solo. Now, to do me, cut the bamboo concombian. To turn out to another bamba, no number, the man puts it in yellow as I can. Tipu yaratian wound them. 
kaza ba asla ka sisala ka dagare ka farfarnama ka walsi ka bumpa ba bumpa ba chew chew kwae bala ma yaya to ti nan la ma dia mala te gang la bana de be rotunu te gang ba and hale to program ma da mala bisim shan da bian because produce product production ma de bunun easy the top pam ati am produce video gang ay en dilash ya non de funi so kar chaka te to gwara amma tra to chan wa en te ko shal ka chan bolga te ko shal pa pam po te pa nyi sponsorship bonzal nim en tabu so ne te so te pa en gwarme en pira kama kun pa men te nyi kun pa gwarme gwarme a chi ves ka te pye chi ko an te nyi to ti ya en pira la la chi ma ka non de le dagban ni en sa la le mala kama te te wul me shambana den pa e la la nyir ngoma bo pam bian ni so bian ni o ku gum dagbana be nodna wo tala kama ni mu an ka tan ku yina be ti ka hankale tan do ku nya tro tro ka ta tura amma o yi bi ji an to wum ni ma no de la chiva ka zan da la chiva mana be la la ni san ngoma ra ka bi yi arsilmi sile do ko ko nya bi sha'adin din din da la chiva okay in yi bi yi arsilmi sile ma mu kan be duniya ya ngus yan gum de ka ba no o ho a she be yan ni no din gana ma ba ba mai ni san da ma ka bi to pan ba ma an chan hal ta pa ba lo she ko Ama ti ni da gban jan kala ti da gban ko ko fune ni sa da to to ko ati da gban ti da gban ba ma gban in pa da lo she ko din tun to ko ama pa ni mi so da ti mi me dan gban pini facebook ko yan ne kama ni kan bo san nan da ba program kan bo san ni ya man le tin shi ya sa a shi ngo ai ko ko gana za dun dun kan fune ai en ke dun dun she fune ka so ti bo mun kan bo san ni na to ti ko en ke so yor la Do kwa mala so ko ko biara na ka ko ko ndu kambo asle be ndu ko ko kaps kambo asle be jafu be tang tang shafu so over fifty percent of gara population bo ndu la kambo asle da gba mbo je lo le kamza asa dunia ya yamang le nyale ama halit shafu ko biara ni yi <hesitation> to do le <hesitation> do le saf polo in kara te da gba mbo ndu tum ndu tuma in ko biara hal le ten years ka bo ndu da gba ni o so karfu ndu ba so do tum ndu kamba ni ten ma ma te fu mbo te da gba ni ma te pa lo shafu le kana ndu ndu fu gam da gba ni kar to kwa te Ama until then the tune to konon solo ka ba ne kama de nyala biala biala de zo ka te shada ti ya sil mensle ma biala ka te gabla da gbanne donc len chaka kama te vol ni ba hankal na lapsa na da gbanne ma fune en sa den to te pas te shal ka ba ba pas force na ba bo amnya da gbanne ma de nyeb insha Allah donc ko ezan shal ba ande le nyama kama ne shi je dun dun kam fune zo kara che ble biane a gbaye ko bo na wum de le an to ko le en vu ke shukru bla hal jss bi ko le nyu ba mra ba na ka ote ore ote yar nyam gar la tra ka ba wum de ka jira fa sha dem jar fu so ta ne ko za wa so sha ba wa da de non ve ngi la pam kan ko yam pro ka pa ni an le ko te jima da ba le jo aware te jima na ko bien ka te bon de zanzan to ke ti en ko la ba sha do bien te pe ta jima jima ma basically 30 minutes come pro with me on on this program and i would go into the future what are the future look like for you somebody has expressed me that uh people perhaps children would grow picking up whatever at all is in the house mm -hmm. the we would see we have seen our politicians children would take over from them yeah uh businessmen and women have their children would take over from them mm. you are directly and uh, perhaps an uncle to our mc <laughs> are you considering going into, poli into politics one day <laughs> you see uh, one thing about me is that the way the politics of ghana is today despise me a lot I hate Ghanaian politics for now. Mm. So politics is very unattractive to me. You're not making reference to the current regime. Not the current politics regime. At large. Politics at large okay. in Ghana. Mm. It's always been NDC or NPP. Okay. And they both have never helped us in any way possible. Okay. They have always, always been the corruption is just too much. Mm. And I always say that my uncle is one politician, I would be like if I become a politician. Okay. He would not spend a dime of the taxpayers money on anything even if i'm going to die he prefers for me to die than to take money that does not belong to him mm -hmm. and so i wish we had politicians like him okay. but unfortunately there's just five percent of his kind mm -hmm. in our body politic today mm -hmm. and so not until we are able to change our political landscape our political culture then i don't think i would ever want to be into politics but if in future i see that people are beginning to become more politically aware mm -hmm. and then we are become we if are that should be the case in the future are we going to see you there yeah sure play the game sure and sure which, I, I, which, would, i would want to which, which, I, I, which divide would you want to belong to the mpp or the ndc no let the future decide that one for me but i would want to be part of people who would help to develop ghana
right. no matter if it is politics that is going mm. to help me do that mm. why not but if it, i can also be you know able to contribute my quota to the development of ghana right. through other things and not politics but should so it for, be politics should it be politics the, the, the supposing the future was today mm -hmm. that could not be the case mm -hmm. but supposing it was today mm -hmm. Judging by the two political parties, the way they have governed so far, <laughs> who, which party would it be? I think I would have joined the CPP or the PNC really? and strengthened together that, with that them. That would have meant you wouldn't be in power. We could, you know, when, when you look at certain things, the impossibility is always possible. If you have a good team, a great How team... How possible is, is it they see, they see people, the minor parties come into power in the next 10 years? If, if they forget about every other selfish interest, there's a lot of, that's why I say, I said that the Ghanaian political culture is very, very bad. People are interested in what they do or, or in what they achieve more than what the people of the country are going to gain. Mm -hmm. And so you see all these minority parties, you see the, the, the chairman, mm -hmm. the flag bearers and all other people in mm -hmm. those particular political mm -hmm. parties mm -hmm. are interested in what they will gain more. Okay. If they could put their parochial interests aside, team up. I am telling you, they would have been a third force that could easily knock off NPP and NDC, I and see. Ghana would have been a better place. And do you for see that us. happening anytime, anytime soon? I don't see that happening anytime soon, and that is why I am not going to be interested in politics anytime soon. That, that is why you wouldn't want to associate <laughs> with NPP and NDC. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that, that that has been a nice convo with me, <laughs> and I had on the show today Abdul Jalil Nabi, his host of Northern Activa on Sagani TV. We want to wrap up this whole conversation because uh, time really wouldn't allow us. What would be your final words? I didn't ask of Anika and the mother anyways. I hope they are doing great. Well, they are doing very great. They right. are doing very great. Okay. So uh, what would be your final word of advice to the youth out there, like I said in my intro, mm. those that you as a prayer target, those that want to be like you, mm. what word would you give up to them? Wow. Um, it is interesting. You know, the world is a competitive place. And everybody struggles to be someone in future. But the thing about the world being a competitive place is that you don't have to make it look like you are in a competition with every other person. It's a competitive place, yes, but you need to always pull people along. Don't think that you want to always be the one that will stand out. Mm. People need to go with you. If you want to stand out all alone every time, then you will end up being a nobody. Mm. And for me, I believe that there is nothing impossible to achieve. Okay. There's, there's always the need for us to persevere. Mm -hmm. So for me, hard work is key. Okay. Whatever it is that we are doing, just get a plan, work at it, work hard at it, work hard at it, and pray, and you would get to where you want to be. Okay. When we started uh, by Northern Achiever, we didn't believe we would get to this point. Okay. And today, I am shocked and surprised to hear that maybe people somewhere are looking up to me. Mm -hmm. it, it is something that is surprising I, i'm not too sure about it but whatever it is whoever is watching i would just want to say that nothing is impossible in this world to achieve and in whatever you do work hard pray and ensure that you are always moving along with other people don't always want to be alone if you want to be alone you would end up achieving nothing yeah thank you very much thank you uh, so much let's yes. do the uh, covid 19 shake you one more time thank you thank you, thank you for, for coming on, the on our thank show, you for on the show. Uh, thank we you. really appreciate my name once again is sahidu abdul jadil this is convo with psc on north plus tv thank you very much for your time hope to see you again next time